Welcome back Guardians. Today we are discussing ghosts and more specifically their relationship to the light. Since Sabathun's big ploy in Witch Queen is all about creating hive ghosts and therefore hive guardians, I thought going over what we know about ghosts and the light may give us some insight into how Sabathun will create hive guardians. We're going to talk about the creation of ghosts, what they're made out of, where they go when they disappear, and most importantly, how they are connected to the light. Thanks to Circadian Wolf for helping me write this script and all those who join me over on Twitch each day. A link will be in the description below. And with that, let's get into it. So how were ghosts created? You probably already know the basics. Ghosts were created by the Traveler in its dying breath after it fought the darkness. And their purpose is to resurrect guardians in order to protect humanity. Beyond that, we know surprisingly little. The in-universe discussion of ghosts is filled with unreliable and biased narrators, and even those who are aligned with the light do not necessarily agree on exactly how ghosts were created and what they are. One theory within the Destiny universe suggests that ghosts are pieces of the Traveler that have been split from the whole and sent out into the world. Take for example the speaker's description of ghosts from the constellation's lore entry, Waking. I am the first speaker to see a ghost. The way we tell it, after the collapse, the Traveler cut itself into a thousand tiny pieces and sent them out into the world. These tiny pieces are drawn to me and to others like me, like moths. The first time I saw them, I thought they were surveillance drones, but up close, they were nothing like our old technology. Not really. The way they move seems organic and natural. They spin their shells like their ruffling feathers. Their little forward-facing lights blink like eyes. I let the little ghosts follow me. We talk about what the Traveler was like before the collapse. They like to hear it, and I like to remember. Deep in their core, they remember too, I think. They remember a time when they were all one piece. Now, some ghosts share a similar belief, saying that they remember being inside the Traveler. However, other ghosts are quick to call this out, saying it is a lie. Have a listen to the Ghost Stories lore entry, Difference of Opinion, in which two ghosts are interviewed about their understanding of the Traveler. By the way, this is also a fun little Mario, as in Nintendo Mario, Easter egg. Have a listen. Question. Do you remember being inside the Traveler? Peach. No. Balthazar. I do. We call it the womb. Peach. I've never and will never call it that. Balthazar, imagine a cosmos inside a bottle, trillions of stars orbiting each other in a complex weave, but they aren't stars. Perhaps a better word would be souls. Souls dancing in an infinite space enclosed within a celestial egg. Peach, which is it? An egg or a womb? Balthazar, it's called a metaphor. Peach, well then pick a metaphor not 12. Balthazar, well, what would you call it? Peach, I wouldn't call it anything because I don't remember it and I don't think you do either. As I said at the beginning of this video, it is hard to determine the truth as even ghosts have different opinions on their creation. The only thing we can be certain of is there is no definitive answer. Now let's move on to the next ghost mystery, their physical makeup. In the ghost grimoire card, it says that they are built from machinery and the Traveler's Light. The in-game model of ghosts provides a little bit more information showing how ghosts are made out of two primary components. There's an outer layer, which is typically split into segments and is customizable or replaceable. This shell orbits a core, an inner sphere that contains the ghost's eye and presumably its light. Interestingly, while ghost shells vary greatly in their appearance, Almost all ghosts share the same core, suggesting that perhaps the core is the true form of a ghost and the outer layer is just for additional protection and or fashion. And considering most guardians would say the end game in Destiny is fashion, well then it's probably fashion. A more technical theory on what ghosts are made out of comes from Glint and it seems really out of character because it's almost a bit too clever for the Glint we know. While he doesn't really elaborate on this theory, if true, it would have some interesting implications, which I'll get to in a moment. 
have a listen to the tales of forgotten law entry, Europa One. The administrator tut tutted. I never figured the traveller would have made you lot so gullible. Thought you little guys were supposed to be super smart. I mean, you're basically living computers, right? I think we're sentient energy signatures, housed in a cybernetic construct, Glint said, trying not to be offended. But I do have an internal database, if that's what you mean. Now, Glint's insights don't stop there. He would also go on to provide information about another previously unexplained facet of ghosts. Where do they go when they disappear? Previously, our only information on this subject came from a jokey line Ghost makes in the Saber Strike about I live in your backpack. I also have a very vague recollection of a ghost talking about being inside Guardian's body. And I want to say it's from an entry relating to the Dark Age. However, these lore entries are really difficult to find because you just need to remember exactly what entry it is or you need to reread the entire Destiny lore catalog hoping to find it. Regardless, I couldn't find it. Considering your ghost comes out of your hand when you summon it in game, my overall impression is that ghosts do merge with their guardian in some way. Glint's theory would potentially support this as well. Have a listen to this dialogue from the Astral Alignment Activity. Is anyone else concerned that there's more to Savathun's plan than she's letting on? I hate to admit it, but I agree. She's up to something. She's been especially curious about you. She asked me where you go when you... dissolve. Well, that's open to interpretation, even among ghosts. Personally, I think we decompile into a quantum superposition, like ascension frequency. But unless she's planning to exist in multiple states at once, I can't imagine how that would help her. Okay, now this is way outside of my area of knowledge and expertise with a reference to quantum superpositions. From a quick search, this is what made sense to me when I looked up quantum superposition. And the definition I found used a coin as an example. It said this, In a common experience, a coin facing up has a definitive value. It is head or a tail. Even if you don't look at the coin, you trust that it must be a head or a tail. In quantum experience, the situation is more unsettling. Material properties of things do not exist until they are measured. Until you look at the coin, as it were, it has no fixed face up. I guess the implication is that ghosts exist in several quantum states simultaneously when they dissolve? Question mark. I think what is really interesting is Glint's mention of frequencies, because it's not the only time we've seen this term used in relation to the light. Once again, this is outside of my area of knowledge, but we can examine how the game refers to light frequencies. When Saint-14 was trapped in the infinite forest, the Vex built a mind with the sole purpose of draining his light to stop his rampage. Have a listen to the lore tab from Perfect Paradox. It reads, I never found Osiris, but I've killed enough Vex to end a war, and they, in turn, struck a fatal blow. They completed a mind with the sole function to drain the light from me. It worked very well. Don't worry, not that you worry much. It took them centuries to build, keyed to the unique frequency of my light, and I sit atop its shattered husk. What's interesting is that when we later travelled back in time to rescue Saint-14 from this fate during Season of Dawn, by the time we found him, his light was already gone. However, once we dealt enough damage to the mind responsible for this, the martyr mind, Saint was able to regain his light and deal the final blow. This is unlike other instances of light being drained, such as in the case of Thorn or the Blade of Crota, where once the light is gone, it does not return. It instead more closely resembles Gaul's caging of the Traveller during the Red War, which only severed our connection to the light until the cage was destroyed. We also see a smaller scale example of Gaul's Traveller cage during Season of the Chosen, where a group of Scions attempt to assassinate Zavala by caging his ghost in the same way. This suggests that the Mother Mind didn't actually drain Saint-14's light, it merely blocked his connection to it. This all reinforces what most Guardians suspect, and that is, while Guardian's connection to the light originates from the Traveller, it must also pass through their ghost, i.e. no ghost equals no channeling of the light. That being said, destroying a Guardian's ghost 
does not result in immediate death. There are cases where a ghost is killed, but their guardian survives. And with that, the guardian also loses the light. Right, so let's try to tie this all together. We have Glint and Saint 14 talking about unique frequencies of light. And considering that ghosts are the thing that ties us to the light, maybe ghosts are the physical embodiment of each guardian's unique light frequency. Now, if this is the case, how can we relate this back to Savathun and her lucent brood? Well, to answer that, we're going to need to figure out where the Witch Queen is getting her light. As we know, a guardian's light comes from the Traveler, but this is not the only source of light in the universe. We learned in Season of the Splicer that the Elixir can harness ambient light in their surroundings using a tool known as the Splicer Gauntlet. Have a listen to the Lore tab for Luminous Grasps in which Mithrax attempts to teach his daughter Ido the way of the splicer. It reads, Ido took several deep breaths and extended her mind's eye through the ground, deep into the well of light at the center of the planet. She followed the light through the firmament, up through her body and into the gauntlet. It whirled smoothly to life. Yes, just so, Mithrax encouraged her. Now feel the light extend from the gauntlet into the shank. Feel its code lying dormant. It is sleeping, waiting for you to wake it. Ido extended the gauntlet. A surge of energy shot forth from its claws, sending crackles of electricity rippling across the shank's surface. Okay, so Savathun was disguised as Osiris during Season of the Splicer, so it's very possible she could have gotten access to Splicer technology during this time. However, the ambient light used by these gauntlets pales in comparison to the power wielded by guardians, so it's unlikely Savathun could have used them to create hive guardians. There is, or rather was, another way that Savathun could have accessed or at least researched a more potent source of light in our system, Io. Since the Traveler left Io partway through the process of terraforming it, the moon was full of the Traveler's raw energy. While this energy is not strictly light, it was successfully used by Gaul and the Red Legion in their research when learning how to steal the light from the Traveler. This energy was also used by the Warlock Ashamir in an attempt to create what he referred to as synthetic light. During the adventure postmodern Prometheus, Asher uses our Guardian as a test subject in an experiment where he hopes to be able to create new Guardians. After we initiate testing, Asher's equipment begins generating what are essentially orbs of light, though their visuals are slightly different. These orbs give us a considerable amount of super energy when picked up, suggesting that they can be used to fuel our light-based abilities. In the end, the experiment does turn out to be a failure, but the way Asher describes it is curious. Have a listen to the ending dialogue from this adventure. All clear at the test site. Um, you guys have any results? <laughs> this thing isn't gonna put the traveler out of a job, right? Unfortunately, my predictions appear to be flawed. Your light cannot pass to another, nor can the power created by this experiment. What he means is no. We cannot create or take light. Only the Traveler can choose to gift us with it. What's interesting is that Ash doesn't state the experiment was unable to create synthetic light, only that neither it nor our light could pass to another person. And this is where we circle back to ghosts. We've already established that the Traveler is the source of a Guardian's power and speculated that the unique frequency of their ghost is required to harness the light. So perhaps all Asher's experiment needed was a way to generate and or transmit light frequencies. Interestingly, Savathun was in command of the Taken on Io at this time and her forces swarmed the experiment as soon as it started. So we can assume that the Witch Queen knows of Asher's findings. It's also worth noting that during the introductory mission on Io during Vanilla Destiny 2, the Taken were in the process of draining the Traveler's energy from the moon. Have a listen to Ash's dialogue from the mission Sacrilege. All channels, this is a sky shock alert. Someone or something drew the Taken here. Asher Mir? Is that you? Irrelevant. The Taken are sapping the moon's energy. I hypothesize that Io will implode if someone does not intervene. Guardian, we cannot lose this sacred place. Do what must be done. Stop the Taken. We also know that Savathun was borderline obsessed with ghosts during her time disguised as Osiris. 
She studied the light suppression technology used by Gaul and even asked Crow to get her some dead ghost from Spider. Have a listen to this dialogue from the end of Astral Alignment. Ikora, I've been thinking about some things Osiris... <clears throat> Savathun asked me to do. I assume these weren't in any official reports. What did she want? Dead ghosts. A handful from Spider's personal collection. I see. We didn't find any when we searched Saint and Osiris' home in the city. Nevertheless, it's troubling. So, I wonder if Savathun has cracked the secret to creating her own light. She could use the Traveler's energy from Aya as a source, Ash's experiments as a means of production, and the dead ghost shells as housing. The last thing she would need to do would be understand and mimic the light frequencies. It's also possible that rather than creating her own light, Savathun is simply using her hive ghosts to tap into the power of the Traveler through, once again, understanding of light-based frequencies. Another possibility is through the use of alchemy, which I recently discussed in my trailer breakdown. The link will be below. Of course, these are all just theories and it's possible Bungie will blindside us with something completely different. And I guess we'll have to wait to see what happens in Witch Queen. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word ghost to represent the hive ghosts arriving with Witch Queen. Peace.